Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Brad and this is Trail Recon. And today we are gonna take you on a tour of a very well-built 1998 Jeep Wrangler TJ. And I've got the owner here, Dane. Dane, man, thanks for uh, coming out and of course. letting us take a close look at your Jeep, man. I know that you've put a lot of work into this and there's a lot of stories behind this. And let's just get right into it. Tell right. us a little bit about the history behind buying this Jeep. Well, it all came from this idea that I had to teach my kids how to drive before they turn 16. Yeah. Because I grew up in the Midwest and by the time I was eight years old, I was driving cars, boats, motorcycles, sea doos you know, you name it. Yeah. If it had a wheel, if it, it, I was driving it. Yeah. So um, it all came from the idea of wanting to build a car that I could take them out to the desert, teach them how to drive and not worry about if they're going to hit anything or right. uh, everything will be fine. And um, I was going to build a pre-runner because that's my background is pre-runner and Baja Bugs. Okay. I built a couple, about three or four of those over the years. Yeah. And so I was going to build a uh, Explorer into a pre-runner and that would be about a twenty-five to you know $40,000 build sure. depending on what I would do. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm just not ready to spend that kind of money. Uh, so one of my coworkers was like, hey, I'm, I'm looking at getting a Jeep for a trail rig. Take it out, go fishing, go camping. I'm like, okay, well, I'll look into it. So he got the bug started in. Yeah. As soon as I got the bug, I was like, man, I'm looking, looking, looking for a Jeep to buy. But every Jeep I found, I was like, I couldn't find one for less than $8,000. Yeah, they hold $6, their value. $6,000. I was like, yeah. man. Yeah. Even going with a YJ, I found a um, 88 or an 87 that I was looking at. And it was not in the best of condition for $2,000. Mm -hmm. I thought about it. I was like, ah, but I just didn't like some of, I didn't like the leaf springs. Yeah. I wanted to be able to go coils uh, to improve your ride, you know, and so a little bit better characteristics as well, on-road and off-road, mm -hmm. so I didn't want to do leaf spring. And so I started looking and um, I got some friends that do auctions, and so I was like, well, let's look at the auction. So I found this sitting in an auction and um, we began to bid on it, and as soon as we started bidding on it, they pulled it from the auction. I'm like, so what happened? Did somebody get it? I mean, yeah, what, yeah. What's, what's the story behind it? So we called and come to find out. There was white smoke behind the exhaust where they started it up. Uh, and so I was like, well, um, they didn't want to run it because possibilities were, you know, blown head gasket or valving issues, whatever. And uh, then they didn't want to take it inside and have the white smoke fill the building, so they didn't run it. So I went and checked it out, and um, I remember sitting down in the Jeep, and I was like, okay, Lord, if uh, this does not produce white smoke, then I'll buy it. If not, then I won't buy it. I won't even pursue it. Uh, but I don't want to get a headache. I don't want to purchase sure. a headache. Sure. So. That's tough buying an auction, man. You take a big risk with that for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was a big risk. I yeah. pulled up, it looked nice. No, it didn't look anything like this. Right, right. <laughs> but it looked nice. And um, so I remember calling the dealership that had it, had it at auction. They had repoed it. And um, so he told me that he had 4200 into it. And I was like, well, 4200 is a whole lot cheaper than six or $8,000, what I've been looking at, because sure. the, the cheapest TJ I could find four cylinder was $6,000, cheapest. And I knew what I was wanting to do to it. And I was like, I don't want to get one for six and then do everything I'm going to do. I want to get cheaper. Right. So I was like, well, you know, I don't know what's wrong with it. White smoke came out the exhaust when they started it up here at auction. And uh, so would you take $2,000? I'll take the risk. You don't have to tow it back to your mm -hmm. dealer. And um, I will, um, I'll take the risk for $2,000. He says, I can't. I got 4200 into it in wheels and tires. Yeah, a little negotiating and start. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, well, would you take 2500 He says, I can't. I got 4200 <laughs> into it. I was like, okay, you know what? I'll think about it. So I hung up the phone, thought about it, crunched some numbers, and I went back to him about 10 minutes later. I said, would you take $3,000? He says, I'll take $3,000. Nice. So I picked up the 98 TJ, $3,000. had 178,000 miles on it. Uh -huh. As soon as I got it out on the road, 20 miles an hour, death wobble. Oh, yeah. It just got shaken right off the road. Tell us uh, a little bit about the inspiration for how you wanted to, uh, to build this. The whole uh, inspiration I actually got was from Dirt Every Day, uh -huh. uh, Tube Sock, yeah. the white TJ that uh, okay. that Fred built. And so that was like, I watched, I was like, man, that's kind of what I, he's got a four cylinder, it is possible. <laughs> <laughs> right, awesome. It is possible. And uh, of course, I mean, all the stuff I've built, I mean, of course, VW Bugs, it's not power, any related to yeah. horsepower. And then even the pre-runners I built four cylinders. So I never, I was never the guy for power. I was always the guy for reliability. Yeah. Now this has got the four cylinder in it. Yep. It's got the, uh, the 2.5. Okay. Um, how, how is that so far uh, with the mods you've done? Um, it's actually not too bad. Okay. You know, when I first got it, I thought that it would be a dog and just no pep, but with the mods that we've done to the engine bay, and um, even we re-geared, so it's not actually too bad. Now, what mods have you done on the engine so far? Uh, engine, we did a Banks header. Okay. And we did a 4.0 throttle body. Okay. Um, an M intake. 
okay and yeah. then we've done a banks exhaust yeah but um the actual exhaust that we did was a customization of sure. a banks yeah so well it sounds good well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned you re-geared. What gears did you end up throwing in here? Actually, everything that's been done on this Jeep, except for um, some of the items that we can talk about, most of the items were purchased used. Yeah. So, um, the axles, actually, I bought the axles with 48s in them. Okay. So, they were already geared to 488, so nice. I didn't have to do that. Uh, so they're still geared 488. So you mentioned uh, you lot, bought a lot of stuff used. So this has uh, yeah. been kind of a penny pincher build. You exactly. Mentioned, right? That's what we called it, penny pincher. Yeah. And the point was, how much money can we save, but build a good quality um, vehicle that can go off road and be capable? Yeah. Now is it finished? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay. the answer that, that's always the answer, sure. right? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about some of the specifics, man. What what do we got going on in the front here? Um, up front now. Actually, the front of the vehicle is one of the places where we had to purchase new because I didn't find anything used that I liked. I was okay. very particular with the way the front of the Jeep had to look. Yeah. They're just I didn't want a big stinger. Yeah. And I didn't want the bush guard or anything. I wanted a small stinger that you couldn't see past the hood. Okay. And so the bumper is the stubby uh, crawler concepts. Okay. Uh, with their low stinger front. And then to get us out of those sticky situations, hopefully we never get stuck. Right. But you never know. Or you maybe I'll know. be pulling some other people out. Right. Uh, we did a Smitty built, the uh, X20 10,000 pound winch. Okay. And um, this we got at a, a closeout price. And so we were able to put it on there. What's really nice about this one is that the um, remote to run the winch is wireless. Nice. So I can go stand, you know, yeah. 50 feet from it or somebody can be running it for me someplace else, don't have to worry about a wire. Sure. And you want the synthetic line, which uh, right. I'm a big fan of. So that's, yeah, uh, that's... I didn't I didn't want to do the steel cable. I, I thought synthetic would be a little bit safer, a little sure. bit better. And you've got, uh, you got a little bit of light upgrades uh, going on? Yes, and this is an area of the truck where we didn't really um, go the cost effective route Yeah. because I got bad eyesight. And so driving <laughs> at night, I really want to be able to see what I'm doing. So we actually did trucker headlights, okay. uh, which were not very cheap. Yeah. You know, they're pretty expensive. And same thing in the rear, uh, the rear tail lights. But now where we did go cheap again was with our light bar yeah. and our pods. Yeah. So these are just Phillips purchased off Amazon. Yeah. I think I got the whole setup for like 200 bucks. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. They work, man. And, and that's, uh, that's all that it's important now. Yeah, the suspension on here is, you've done a lot of work to the suspension. Right? We've got a long arm kit in here? Yes. Tell us a little bit about what we got going we on. We have a full traction long arm kit, and here's another area of the Jeep where we had to purchase new. Yeah. So we went with a full traction uh, long arm kit, um, mainly because of the articulation that it supposedly yeah. has. I haven't got to try it out yet. Yeah. Uh, probably today we'll get to try it out yeah. a little bit. It's just recently uh, finished, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it just got done uh, about two months ago. And then this happened. <laughs> I haven't really been driving it very much. Yeah. You know, um, and so I've been waiting for this to heal up before I really got into serious off roading because I don't want to, I want to be able to have full control. Okay. Um, now, what size lift is it? It's a four. A four, four inch, inch lift. lift. And, yeah. and what are the components? Who are they by? Um, the, we got Fox 2.0 shocks, so we did a four inch spring. Okay. And um, the reason why we did four inches was because we don't want it to be too top heavy in terms of center of gravity. We wanted to keep it somewhat low. Now, you replaced both axles front and rear? Yes. Yeah, I got both axles front and rear and the wheels, the high line fenders, the inner roll cage. Uh, rear fenders all from the same guy yeah and uh, the axles it was a Dana 30 uh, front that's trust and it came with chrom chromoly shafts okay. uh, disc brakes fully built front fully built rear Dana 44 rear thrust yeah um, and so axles have both been strengthened uh, we, they already came with an ARB locker up front nice. and a Detroit locker in the rear. Man, if you would have done that all from stock and new purchase, man, that, you're talking right. thousands and thousands right. and thousands of dollars. Yes, at least $8,000, yeah. at least. And uh, you probably came in at, what, a third of the cost of that? Uh, I came in 1400 bucks. Wow. That's a, <laughs> man, that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Very cool. What, uh, now, what have you done on the interior? I see you've got the, the roll bar in there. Um, we did a hard rock uh, bolt-on roll cage because... Um, my boys are two and four. Yeah. Eventually this will become my oldest. This will be his vehicle. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I purchased it for them. Nice. And usually there's two car seats in the back. Man, what and... a great car for a kid. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wish my dad would hook me up like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so at the same time, I wanted to be safe. Yeah. I wanted the added protection. So the bolt-on cage was a must. Some cage reinforcement was a must. But I, just, I also didn't want to do a full build because cages are super expensive to sure. do custom fab so again penny pincher you yeah. know yeah, yeah. best way we can save money i got the cage and then the highline fenders 
Um, and then the rear cage that holds the 35 inch tire, uh -huh. I got that for 400 bucks. Okay. Now the interior, are the, you replace those seats or did those yes. come with it? Okay. Yes, those are, the front are beard, uh, performance seats, okay. uh, suspension seats. How do you like them? I love them. Yeah. I had I, every build I've done, I've done suspension seats. Okay. So that was the first thing I was looking at was suspension seats. So they're about 550 a seat. I got them 500 for both with the harness. Nice. So. Okay. And you mentioned your wheels and tires. Let's yes. talk about those a little bit. Um, well, again, Craigslist. Yeah. <laughs> so I got the I got the uh, five um, Wrangler, the MTZs, uh, 35 inch. Got them all for 400 bucks. Wow. So again, saving money everywhere yeah. we can. Um, and then the the rims, the wheels are um, beadlocks, the ATS by American Racing. Okay. Beadlock 17 inch, 17 nice. by 12 Those are nice and a half. wheels. Yeah, yeah. For sure, so. man. Well, awesome. What uh, What's kind of the next thing that you're going to do for sure? Like, uh, Next thing for sure is I've already called um, the shop. I mean, one of the biggest things behind this build are the shops that support this build. Yeah. I couldn't do it without my friends and without the guys oh, that absolutely. own the shops that I work with. And uh, so Highway Auto in Orange, he's changing his name to Car Moded. So, uh, but Car Moded is doing a lot of the uh, mechanical, just tune up and stuff. And okay. any type of little thing that I have, I take it to him. The guy's responsible for the majority build of this uh, Jeep was Inland Jeep out in Rialto. Okay. They did it all. They saw the vision. They jumped on it. And a lot of stuff they actually came up with, like the um, inner uh, wheel wells. Uh -huh. They actually got a grinder and made that textured look that you we can oh, see. Oh yeah, it looks good. And so that was their idea. So a lot of stuff came from them nice. and being creative. And I just let them go. And so without them, man, I, I couldn't have done this build. And then another shop that's helped me out uh, has been JBM over in um, Orange as well. Okay. So nice. that's that's a big thing was help. So I've already through Inland Jeep purchased and got ready. Uh, we are rear changing out because it's got a rear Detroit locker in it. Yeah. I want to do an ARB. Okay. And then we're going to re-gear to 513s. Nice. Uh, that'll be so nice. That's where we're at as in the next. So after this, probably next week, Jeep's going back in the shop okay. to do 513s and then also to do the ARB locker in the back. Okay. What about uh, future trail plans? You got anything that's uh, like high on the list right now? Um, I just want to get out and just do supply some stuff in Big Bear. I'm like yeah. Long Beach area. Cerritos is where I'm from. So yeah. um, I, although I grew up riding Gorman, I've ridden everything in Gorman. And so I may take it up to Gorman, um, but for sure I got Mojave Trail on the list. Yeah. Uh, take a trip up to Moab. Um, yeah. Eventually, uh, once I get the motor stuff figured out, I'll do the Rubicon. I don't feel comfortable doing the Rubicon on this motor, yeah. uh, just because I worry about the horsepower. Um, but I got plans for uh, motor swap. So. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, what are you thinking? <laughs> well, this is where I'm gonna have to change the name from Penny Pincher to something else. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I want to do the new Cummins R2.8. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that's the that's the engine swap I want to do. Well, that would be really nice, and man, that would push this thing right along for sure. Man, I love that you have built this on a budget, and it's so well designed and thought out. And uh, man, I think it's really an inspiration to a lot of folks. That, you know, not everybody has a lot of money to throw down to build their their rigs. And man, what a what a great build! I really uh, I really like it. Um, well, thanks a lot for coming out and talking to us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us, Brad. Yeah. And that's really what I want to share is just that you can get a good quality build without spending the boo koodles amounts of money that yeah. people have to and sure. get into their builds. I mean, there are ways around it if you are willing to just do a little bit of work and, and grease, elbow grease, sure. get in there. Um, the wheels, we did, um, they were black and I had them powder coated um, by um, Powder Coat Company in Orange. I believe it's ATS powder coat, and we did that penny copper look, so yeah, penny looks, pincher. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there are cheap ways to do custom work and, and find, what I've learned is find shops, develop relationships with them, yeah. and they're going to be there to support you, yeah. back you, and that's been my biggest help are the shops. Awesome. I couldn't have done it without the shops and having that relationship with them. Yeah, well, I agree, man. It's uh, it's all about the, the right folks to help you out, for sure. That's, that's just a life lesson right there. Yeah. But, well, man, thanks for talking to us today. I really yes. appreciate it. Hey guys, I hope you have enjoyed checking out this Jeep just as much as I have. Uh, Dane, you've done a beautiful job with it. Thank you. Uh, if you are visiting the channel for the first time, guys, man, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. And if you haven't been over to our website recently, go check it out. We get a new redesign over there. So www.trailrecon.net. Go check it out and tell us what you think. Until next time, we'll see you out on the trail.